I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time. Like the last time, you better get ready to race to the top. I'm ready to do this. Show you what the truth is. I step on the field. It's time to get real. I'm feeling so ruthless. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. Hand over my heart. I do this for my town. I do this for my crowd. So turn me up real loud. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Yeah. So what are you afraid of? Those feelings are made of. Get in the game, your moment of fame. Show them what you made of. It's time that we stand up. It's time that we man up. For anyone asking who is the best, we putting our hands up. My time, my time. Nothing can keep me from reaching the top. This time, like the last time, I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to I'm rise. I'm ready to throw down. It's time for the showdown. I'm ready to rise. Don't be surprised, I'll take on the world now. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Down. Hand over my crown, hand over my heart. I do this for my town, I do this for my crowd. So turn me up real loud. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. My town, my crown. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. We're reaching the top. We're reaching the top. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. My time.
Hello and welcome to the AOSC Super Series live on Apex Racing TV and live on the iRacing Esports Network. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick, alongside me is Daniel Lee, Matthew Norris and Scott Newton who is operating the cameras this evening. And we are gathered for this round nine of the championship. It's time for Montreal and it's time for a bumper grid, Daniel. One of the most noticeable things to think about this race is the size of the field we have around a relatively small circuit we usually see 40 cars you know we had 45 for bathers that's quite a few we've got over 50 cars on the grid tonight and around this very narrow circuit this could be a properly exciting one to match the endure of course that we had last season yeah good evening sam and to everyone tuning in great to have you back with us for this event but yeah as you say sam you're spot on it's a very short circuit only about 4.3 k's in length We've got a lot of drivers out here tonight. Only one split going on tonight, but over 54 drivers out on circuit. So not a lot of room for these guys to get in a good lap while qualifying is currently ongoing, but uh, a lot of drivers setting some blistering times out there so far. No, the, uh, we, we say it every single time. James Scott, you won last time out, and every time we say it, it gets a little bit better. It was six races, seven races. It's now eight races out of eight so far this season but boy was he pushed last time out at Le Mans somehow managed to get through it a little bit fortunate I think even he will say any chance that his luck will run out tonight you think hey g'day Sam g'day everyone I I hate to be the bearer of bad news but I really hope so <laughs> um I would I would love to see just James Scott not win at one race this season and that would be really nice but um his his performance has been clinical that's why he's the reigning champion. That's why he's wearing the number one proudly on the side of his Logitech G, Alsa's Esports Commodore. He's just, he's the champion and he performs championship cha like races every time we're on track. So I don't think so, but I can wish. He didn't put enough fuel in the car last time at Le Mans and others made a lot of mistakes. Um, there were probably five or six drivers. He, you know, got close to Scott, but then got a slowdown, had a spin, had a long pit stop, something like that, went for the wrong strategy. Um, and in the end, really, Scott was the only one remaining and managed to win. It was a pretty impressive and, and one hell of a last half. I recommend checking that out after you've watched tonight's race. Uh, big thanks to all the sponsors for this uh, Season 9 of the AOSC Super Series. Acuta, we provide uh, height, safety, and rigging equipment for sale and hire. Uh, Jinx shifters, you make Aussie made premium shifters and also brick bias and ARB adjusters as well. Uh, race Circuit Arts Australia, you make fantastic uh, race circuit designs, uh, kind of outlines of circuits which you can uh, put on your wall. They look absolutely stunning. Uh, Sixth gear imagery, you do sim racing digital imagery. Wolf graphics, uh, making Aussie made uh, stickers uh, to a very high quality and West End Master to Easy Finance and Paramata Isuzu Ute as well, which are all Sydney car dealers. And big thanks to Jamie McKnight, the uh, uh, main car dealer there, and uh, yeah, helping out with all the sponsorship for this series and continue to push this uh, fantastic championship further and further into uh, professionality. Uh, in the championship, uh, it speaks for itself. I, I say this every single time. James Scott, 2.6k at the moment. Jordan Ross in uh, second place. Corey Shepard, I believe, moving up ahead of Adam Briggs there, perhaps. Although both of them both had a decent rounds last time out. Carl Stokes in fifth place. Uh, you can see Jordy Sinney up into sixth place now. Uh, Brown Borg, Ken Latzer, Brady Myers, and Damien Johnston rounding out the top 10 places. But certainly Scott with a comfortable lead at the moment in the championship. And uh, yeah, expect to see all those drivers at the top of the standings out here tonight. We have got a bumper field, as we were saying earlier on. We're currently in a 20 minute practice session and we've only got about 1 minute 45 remaining to see who's going to take pole position. And surprise, surprise, it is currently James Scott on pole position. Only a tenth and a half clip, but uh, that is often the gap in qualifying. Uh, qualifying could be quite an advantage but Corey Shepard at the moment um, Daniel up in second place I mean Shepard's been impressive throughout this season but Premier don't usually specialise in qualifying certainly his teammates uh, I mean Borg and McMullen are, are usually a little bit further down when it comes to qualifying but Shepard I think this might be his best qualifying of the season and that uh, really does a, a, a good sign for the race 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's been a driver that's been sort of on the up and up over the course of this championship so far and really starting to extract a lot of performance out of that car, obviously, with the help from his team, definitely assisting in that benefit. But it's good to see the guys actually starting to get on top of these setups, really starting to apply the pressure to James Scott out front. And I know Nori was saying that he'd love to see him not die. I think secretly we're all hoping that can happen, but we still want to see him effectively go on and continue the running. And uh, to have Corey not that far behind his only uh, well, actually, the gap's just been extended to three tenths of a second now, following a, a scorching lap there from James. But it's really allowing all these guys to really start lifting their game and start coming after him now. And it's great to see Noe the return of Harley Haber because he was so good last season. He won three races. Did I say, in fact, no, I think well, he won three enduros, didn't he? Uh, alongside El Nabi, I believe. Um, and also won a couple of others as well. I think he won Summit Point as well. Um, he, he's returning with United. Sam Sports hopefully we see him for the rest of the season, but he was extremely strong around this circuit last season. Pushed James Scott all the way uh, for the endurance win, currently lining up in fifth. Uh, what, how, how, how much can we expect from him today? I mean, do you know if he's been racing the supercars recently or has he been uh, uh, diverting his attention to other machinery? Well, uh, Harley has. I haven't seen Harley in the um, in the sim since we were at Silverstone for the Enduro, but uh, he has recently signed himself to the E Series for the upcoming Supercars E Series. So um, he he's he should be driving in that. He should be on form, and, and like you say, tonight he's P5 on the road at the moment. So uh, he should be quite quick. I am very encouraged by the pace though of Jordan Ross, Andrew Dyson, and Corey Shepard all up there. That Synergy DPR and Premier bubble just to ha ahead of Harley seems pretty packed. Brilliant to see so many different teams being uh, represented in those upper positions. Brady Mars only being able to qualify in seventh place at the moment, which is a bit surprising because Brady's been very strong uh, recently, but uh, at the moment just a little bit further down. Is that actually Mars coming to the line? Uh, no, it isn't. It's actually James Scott going for another lap. Uh, does he improve again? I don't think he does, no. He just uh, remains with a 34.3 there. Uh, Brett Loxton uh, also out on circuit, but I think he crossed the line after the checker flag was out. So that is everyone across the line. Once the session ticks over, we will be able to take you through your grid for this round nine of the... Uh, apologies, yeah, round, round nine of the championship uh, yes. for this uh, season nine course of the AOSC Super Series. Uh, Daniel, this is surely one of the highest chances of safety cars that we're going to see all season. We saw a couple at Monza. Uh, we can have a random one as well, but uh, th this is almost like a perfect concoction of, of, uh, of, of um, safety car ingredients. We've got a large grid, we've got a track with very close walls, and we've got quite a, a split in, um, in in abilities up there with, of course, everyone just being put into this top split. So uh, if we don't get a safety car today, then I, I feel like we might not have a safety car for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a perfect storm as far as what we can expect out there. I mean, as you say, turn ones and two, very technical, very tight, and trying to shift 54 cars all the way through there going to be a little bit tricky. There are a few other, well, pretty much all corners around this circuit uh, open up the opportunity for there to be some big incidents. Once you get through one and two, if you can make it that far, three and four is a pretty tricky one. And we've seen quite a lot of guys have some issues against the wall there. But the big one's going to be how they come to finish out the lap, turns 13 and 14 down across the wall of champions, because we've seen a lot of races lost there with slowdown penalties and the guys just taking that little bit too much curb. Yeah, that's certainly going to be something to watch out for on the opening lap in particular. James Scott then, card number one on pole position, and in the end, he was quite comfortable. Three tenths to a second clear of Corey Shepard. Andrew Dyson lines up in third. Then it's Jordan Ross, Harley Haber, uh, Damien Johnston, uh, Beardy Mars, Ta Michael Taliancic really could qualify in there for Taliancic. That's a good sign for him. He did get a podium. Yeah, he got a podium last season, I believe, for pursuits in the team race around the had around here. So he is good around this track. Uh, Brett Loxton and Jordy Sinney uh, rounds out the top ten. Carl Stokes a little bit further down the triple eight, uh, triple eight car. In 11th, there's Jamie Stovall, Adam Briggs, again, a little bit of a struggling qualifying for Briggs. Uh, Philip Worley starts in 14th, Graham Borg in 15th, there's Dylan Rudd, Kobe Jones, Michael Barron, uh, Jamie McKnight, and Ken Latter. Then behind that, it's Thomas Hins, uh, Christian Smart, Rob Bowden, Neil Pearson, Marty Hansen, Cameron Beacock, uh, Jacob Knight, Craig Jones, 
Greg Sharp and David Kimmond. That's the top 30, and I'll let the uh, rest of the order cycle through for you because we got uh, we got 53. Uh, Tom Freer, by the way, starting in 53rd position, um, and he was very strong around here. Again, pursuit were quite good around here last season, and uh, he is starting well down the order. So really watch out for him as the engine note rises then the lights come on go, go, go. And 150 Great kilometers of racing at montreal is underway scott under pressure straight away from shepherd on the run to turn one over he manages to get onto the racing line and it is a very strong start for him it's scott leading shepherd dyson ross and haver at the moment uh, with a couple of positions just down the uh, order as i think uh, did Rudd and also ken latt getting a little bit of a poor start jordan ross and andrew dyson also bouncing one another into three and four I think we also saw Jordan Steeney there in the Synergy car get rotated around as well. Quite a lot of guys caught up in that earlier issue, which we thought we potentially would see down in one and two. But out front, though, James Scott able to move that Elters car across off the racing line there quite nicely, gets ahead of Corey Shepard and already opening up a nine-tenths of a second advantage. word yet um, the safety car looks like everyone has managed to get themselves back underway focus down on Harley Haver hasn't lost or gained any positions early on and uh, everyone comes down for the first time down into the hairpin one of the synergy cars now is Jordan Ross running very wide on the exit there and Corey Shepard looks and to have also got a slow down penalty well down there right now Those are two guys you don't normally expect to see drop back on that one, but um, it seems that it's happened this time out. James got a let us cross the line for the end of lap one, and uh, as one of the other DPR cars has slowed off the back of the wall, champions. Yeah, that's Damien Stockton falling well down the order as he uh, continues to try and cycle his way into position. Ken Ladder down a couple of spots from where he started. He's got sort of over just ahead of some of the other DPR cars. They're running very wide on the exit, trying to get back in line. Starting to really heat up. Dyson going to have to try and go defensive here on Harley Haver. Haver just sticks the nose out, thinks about an opportunity, closes it right up under the brakes. It's going to be a good opportunity here for him to go down in towards the hairpin. Absolutely. Harley's already showing the nose. He's pressuring Dyson, and there slides the United Esports Commodore, United Sim Sports, I should say, Commodore, right on through and takes uh, Damien Johnson with him. Dyson, who uh, had a fantastic drive last week, finished fourth in the 300k event, and so uh, another good showing for him. Brody Mayers just on the back of this little train. So let's see whether Dyson not able to get through. Chen's there he picks up a lot of curb, and that's going to really allow for Myers there to get a great run. We see one of the pro shoot cars there going very slowly. I think it might have been potentially Teliancic getting a slow down penalty. Right you are, as 41, Andrew Dyson has had a moment coming out of turn two, so that's going to put paid to his efforts, as Telly Andrich has a slowdown of some sort. Yeah, this is the benefit of Montreal, cooking brings out the crazy. Absolutely, it uh, looks like back underway, didn't lose too many positions, now drops down to that 13th position, so... Still plenty of time for him to work his way out. We cut back to a quick replay to see. And then here on Dyson, went very defensive down the inside into one. A bit of a lock up from the Synergy car and then just a bit of side to side contact there with, uh, with Brady. I don't think there's much involved in that. Can't really move those cars too much, but fortunate for Dyson, able to get that car back underway. Yeah, it wouldn't have been, um, wouldn't have been intentional from any part. It looks like it was a bit of net code in that one, but. Uh... He'll move forward, he's got the pace, and uh, 
as we see the rest of that pack angrily forming up. Another slowdown, apparently for one of the, the Premier cars in the background there. I think that might have been Dylan Rudd. He's going to have Michael Teliancic all over him. Rob Bowden also getting up into the mix along with Brett Loxton. And a bit of an angry pack here. Just squeaked both those cars through. Fortunate for Rudd. You see another one of the DPRs. Cars picking up another slowdown. And that's going to be probably the talking point for the whole night. Not only watching these guys get through there unscathed, but what it is is allowing out front is a uh, real extension of the lead at the moment for James Scott. That gap now to four seconds over Harley Haver. Damien Johnston hanging tight in uh, third position at the moment, only seven tenths behind. Oh, into the back of the tank SRT car goes Kenneth Latter. And that wasn't pleasant. <laughs> this is the one thing about Montreal, with the curves being the way they are and the situated the way they are, every time the car hops over it just slightly too far, we get off tracks and that gives the drivers a slowdown. So uh, that will be the hot topic of tonight. Who can avoid slowdowns the most and who can position the car perfectly when hopping these massive curves around Montreal? Yeah, absolutely. And that was something similar we saw at Monza as well. I remember watching the guys going through the second set of chicanes there and just how well they could land those cars. Something they really need to have dialed in for tonight. And uh, for a lot of these guys, we thought they are getting through relatively unscathed. Just a few guys pushing the envelope that little bit too hard. Have a look here, Jeff Bennett up already 18 positions from the start of this race. So it's been a good run for him, making full advantage of those earlier lap one contacts. And that finds himself up in 17th position. Actually, sorry, 22nd position, so. But absolutely, up 18 positions is fantastic um, for Jet to be uh, to be flying tonight. Uh, moving forward to, backwards, sorry, to Rob Bowden. Uh, this, the tank just said, so you looking fantastic. Oh, there's a bit of contact between Cameron, Cameron Beekhoff, was it? Yeah, Cameron Beekhoff involved in that one. And uh, team for him too, the tight band car. We saw them first out at uh, Mid-Ohio. It's been a good run for that team, uh, both in their way up through the field. Montreal will be an initiation of fire if Le Mans wasn't bad enough. Absolutely. Just ahead of these guys, well, just saw a uh, quick run of Greg Sharp there getting involved in a little bit of stuff as we keep an eye here on Phil Wally and Ken Ladder working their way through turns eight and nine. And that uh, looks like a potential slowdown there for Worley, just taking that little bit too much curb again. Bit of an easy thing to do. Is just Ooh, late dive. Late wrong. move. Oh, nice. And number two is that Briggs, Adam Briggs. That is not good run for, um, for Adam. I think last time out at uh, Le Mans, he was actually quite good, showing back, showing himself being back on form. But uh, this is not where he needs to be. Uh, absolutely not. Just look at the slowdown penalty that came for that. It didn't look like there was much involved in it. Actually, Briggs getting through. Quite all right. Keep an eye on that EXG car just in the background. You see the uh, big late dive under brakes. Looks like he locked the rears just a fraction and then straight into the rear end of Briggs there. Briggs fortunate to get that car moving very quickly. Not sustaining any damage either. You don't want to be stuck on the apex of that corner far too long. Uh, good heads up driving from Jacob Knight there to uh, sort of foresee the issue and make, him make the most advantage out of it. He has moved up 12 positions tonight, so he is on the charge. This is one of the real benefits of the Montreal circuit is it, it, because it's that street circuit, it's got those close in walls. As a driver, you really know where the, where the limits are because you can see the concrete getting closer and closer to your driver's mirror. And it's just a super fun surf to drive. Absolutely, it uh, really brings a lot of a lot of self control to, to not keep that car up on the wall to fly through. But uh, very easy to, to have a, an unfortunate event, lock of wheel, and 
find yourself in no man's land there rather quickly. But uh, just got to start to settle it all down. The gap out front still continuing to expand. 5.8 seconds in favour of James Scott. He's really starting to walk away out front of this one. Another very trolled race so far from him. Damon Johnson also uh, fallen quite a ways back um, off Harley like, Black, not too far back off Harley Hay, about seven tenths of a second, but he's got Brady Myers all over him. So work their way up into turn three and four. And the, uh, the Altus car's looking very strong out here tonight. I wouldn't write Harley Haver off just yet. On the, that last lap, his sectors following James Scott were both green. So he might not be closing that gap just yet. It still is expanding at the moment, but it is closing very slightly. Yeah, absolutely. Probably just starting to play that strategy in. Damien Johnson, though, going to have to be very cautious here. He doesn't want to overheat those tyres as they come into the braking zone. Flicks it up and over the kerbs. The ride control looking really nice on that Synergy car. A little bit better, though, on the Altus car. This could be a good opportunity for Brady to get that car down the inside. Tries the late braking, pulls it alongside. And that's a uh, textbook move into the hairpin there. Just rolls the car across the apex back in front, but he might become a bit more vulnerable to head up towards 13 and 14 here. Textbook move from Brady Myers there, getting the job done. Just saw on race management channel come up that uh, uh, Jamie Stovold, car 987, had a drive through for that lap one cause collision. So uh, that'll put pay to his efforts. He was running P5 and he's jumped straight in the lane to take that now. You don't want to be hanging on to those too long, get them out of the way. You're still going to have to come back down though for the uh, pit stop later on. So wait to see when they look to take that one. But uh, battle for third and fourth, just starting to, to die down just a little bit. Brady starting to manage a nice little gap now, about half a second over the Synergy car. But uh, this is a great run from Damien, who I like say earlier on had a, a fantastic run last time out at Le Mans and uh, really starting to continue finding some solid form since the uh, recent switch to the Synergy car. We've been, we've been saying it every every round, these Synergy cars are getting better and better and the drivers behind the wheels are finding more and more pace within that group. So they're moving forward as a team and making a really strong, concerted effort. Looking through the field, this is Jamie Dyke in the Fishy Motorsports uh, 080 Mustang. He's pushing Jamie Stovall, who's just come out of that uh, drive-through, so he will have a psychological advantage, if nothing else, over the uh, pursuit driver. Yeah, absolutely. Not too uh, far ahead. You've also got um, Greg Sharp involved in that. Uh, Steve Vargas just ahead. Jamie McKnight back from injury, a little further ahead of these guys as well. So. So it's a good little battle pack to be in for these guys. They're fighting down over uh, 22nd through to 20th position here. So plenty of opportunity for them to make one or two spots and work their way through. So we see Jamie McKnight poke the nose out there, giving the triple for the older. Uh, I'm still here, I'm still waiting. <laughs> so another slowdown too for the 99, that's Dylan Rudd and very slowly off the wall of champions there, so uh, he's going to drop three or four spots down. And, uh, that car back underway without too much harm. Brett Loxton had a pretty quiet night early on. But, uh, up front, looks like Harley Haber now starting to come under a little bit of attack from Brady. It's only been two laps since he managed to get past Damien Johnston, but uh, pace advantage in the Logitech car starting to come his way. He was just over, or just under a second quicker last time by on Haber and has really closed that gap down. Yeah, we didn't see too much out of Brady in qualifying, but we uh, we know his teammates fast, we know the, the package is fast, so he should be uh, pressuring as he rightly is Harley, but uh, I expect to see a little bit more out of Harley, but he hasn't been in the supercar for a little while, so I sort of expect if he is a bit, um, not on the pace, but running P2, he still would be on the pace. Good look here. Brady thinks about coming down. You see Harley going very defensive. Swings the car wide down into the braking zone. Moves it straight across. Great run over the curbs there. That car looked fantastic as it landed. 
This little battle though is going to allow Damien Johnson to close back in and he's gained quite a good run here. Brady just having to check up marginally through that final sequence of corners there. And uh, this is going to be a great little three-way battle for the second spot on the dice. But it's good to see that Harley isn't going to just let Brady have the move. He's going to make him work all the way for it. And uh, that uh, might hold them up. It might bring Johnson back into it. It might uh, close this battle pack up. It's going to be interesting as we get further and deeper into this race. Yeah, absolutely. We're really going to start playing uh, some interesting strategy. Just continuing to look a little bit further down the field. Jordan Ross and uh, Cody Jones starting to get into a decent little scrap here. You see Cody Shepard also involved in this one as well. And, uh, not much separating these guys here. See Shepard still a little bit defensive. He had that earlier slowdown penalty, which cost him effective seventh place on the or second place on the road. Sorry. He's going to have to be very careful here. Jordan Ross all over him. And uh, straight down the inside there. Locked Big lock up. up though. Gets that car slowed and Forces Shepard away. Takes Kirby. Oh, I thought he was going to take Kirby with him there. But he still has to drive defensively. He won't. The aero advantage will be going to for Shepard there. Oh, as he's locked himself up. Keeps it off the wall, though, with that his, uh, dirt bike style entry there. Just caught the uh, outside edge of the grass there. Good save and great awareness from Kobe to avoid that car as it went sideways through that chicane there. And that's going to be uh, a good opportunity here, too, for Andrew Dyson now to look at gaining an extra spot. In terms of style points, uh, Corey Shepard takes the cake on that one. As this little battle back intensifies, this is, whoa, Kimmon round. Oh, saves it again. Okay, maybe Kimmon's getting style points tonight. Brett Loxton looking to get the move done on Kimmon. He'll be recovering after that. Jamie McKnight, he might try and nudge this one as well. Oh, he tries and gets the United Sim Sports card just there, rattling on the back bumper. So Kimmon knows he's got company. Knight actually down two places from his start, so he must have been involved in this one pretty much uh, from the get-go. But uh, at least on my screen, not too much damage on that Knight machine at the moment, as he'll try to come again at his rival. Uh, behind him as well, just uh, lots of passing. Peacock, Bowden going alongside, although that might be in the uh, next pack, just uh, staying in the same position on that occasion. Back boy off the track. And a big lot of contact uh, too as he uh, tried to get back on. It's like the uh, nice, uh, like every car too had a big run through the dirt there, missed getting into the, uh, the chicane there. So he'll get a slowdown and potential some extra damage as a result of that contact. Yeah, McAvoy's car was involved, but I'm not sure whether it was Mascord uh, or Christian Smart was involved with Jamie Stovold there. That uh, that caused that Constantina, and that was a big big lot of confusion. Everybody dives in, as does Christian Smart. Something we have to be uh, cautious of here, especially for all these cars coming down with the entrance to pit lane here. It's uh, right on the racing line there, and we're going to see just as we did there, a lot of guys trying to thread the needle to push those cars through. Loxton running away from Chet Bennett as yeah, these guys are closing on the cars ahead ever so slightly the tents every lap this battle pack has been alive for the last couple of laps so Loxton applying the pressure to Dylan Rudd who has got a slowdown yeah Again, that story of the night. Everyone making uh, those small little incidents as they get pushed under a huge amount of pressure here. Um, fortunately, they're right able to get back. Not too many spots lost, only three out of it, but uh, we'll have to come back. He finds himself at the head of a pretty decent train as Matty Mascord there uh, on screen trying to work his way through 
on Tom Freer. Jordan Jordan Senior, who we saw involved in that earlier lap one, turn one incident. But, uh, saw a lot of guys caught up in, in a big melee and, and a lot of damage as a result of it. Yeah, Tom Freer really not running where we're used to seeing him tonight. He's uh, down the field in an unusual place. So he'll be racing and fighting out, duking it out as he tries to get the run back on Matty Mascord there. Um, yeah. Keeper under brakes and got that move done. So uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing Tom fighting forward. Jordan Sinney, he's uh, trying to uh, get back the ground he lost at the start of this race. Turn two it was. Yes, Loxton gets ahead of Jones. Gas off his bonnet, it seems, as Jones. So they maybe got caught up in some kind of incident near the start. Loxton uh, back uh, up to 50. Did start in the top 10 with Loxton. It's one of his best qualifiers of the season. Uh, but uh, a bit further down than he would like, Jones, though. Uh, up 12. He's now got Jet Bennett, who's been on charge. 19 places gained so far for the EXG Motorsports driver. And uh, actually, just so I get Loxton's last time, he's actually faster than uh, than uh, some of the drivers right near the front. I mean, faster than Jordan Ross, faster than Kobe Jones. So he will definitely be storming the. You can already see the gap he's put on the Triple One car. We've got Jacob Knight into the pits. He's one of the first front runners, I believe, to come into the pits. Currently, leader of the drivers who have come into the pits is Jane McKnight, who was outside the top 20 before his pit stop. And so Jacob Knight doing something a little bit alternative. This will give him the undercuts on his rivals. It should just be the one pit stop that we have tonight in this uh, 150 kilometer event. Uh, but you don't need to be a genius at maths to realize this is a little bit before halfway. And expect to see someone like James Scott, for example, extend that to probably lap 18, 19, even 20, perhaps, uh, just so that if there is a safety car later on, he'll be uh, all right with his tyres. The 22 all over the place Amazing. at the moment. Uh, once again, getting the style points at the uh, moment, and Johnston is going to lose this one, it seems, to, um, uh, 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 to Jordan Ross. He was pretty close to Myers just previously. But that was good defence there from Damien Johnson. Plays car in the right place, but well, that's how tricky this car is. And of course, you don't want to be understeering out these corners, otherwise you'll hit the wall. So uh, playing a bit of extra power on to rotate the car can also be a good idea, but that's a bit too much. Yeah, very fortunate not to fire the wall there. As we see, Damien Johnson also fires in to the lane to complete his stop. Marty Hansen, Brett, oh, Marty Hansen, sorry, Phil Wally fighting it out in the 12th position. And uh, just saw early too, uh, race control did put up some details around our effective sort of pit window that we're looking at tonight. And uh, based on the tank capacity, which we're running 84 litres, we're looking at around, or somewhere around lap 22 to see the bulk of these drivers in. So quite a few pushing the dice early uh, to come in and get that stop completed, which potentially could hurt them a little later on. It's entire life not gonna be as good as those guys still yet to come down the lane. Johnston into the pits, he did, um, well, jo yeah, Johnston was doing all right, wasn't he? It was, it was Myers, sorry, with the uh, slide earlier on, and uh, Johnston pressurising, apologies if I called that one wrong, uh, a couple of laps ago. But uh, yeah, Johnston into the pits, maybe feeling like he was getting held up by Brady Marks. You could see some aggression out there. It's not that early, I mean, 15, and then you do another, another 20 remaining. Uh, would be all right as um, Jones and uh, Shepard and Dyson all alongside. Only a couple of laps before they hit that critical halfway point in the race. So it isn't so early, but it's probably a little bit too early. As you can see, Scott and Haber and Myers haven't dived in yet. So maybe we had uh, Johnson trying the undercut as Haber and Myers both dive into the lane. Yeah, just to cover off that uh, early pit stop from Johnston, I imagine. Look at that track map. If you find a free pillar piece of real estate, let me know, because that is congested. <laughs> I always say it whenever we go to the... So, oh, did someone spin coming into the pits? What's on there? Spin coming into the pits? I'm not quite sure. Uh, oh, yeah, we yes. do. That's... Uh, 
As Nakajima, who of course lost his front wing at this place in 08 when he came for the pits, and Borg has done a proper rookie mistake there, spanning the pits. Hopefully he doesn't get a penalty for that. I don't think he will do. Um, but uh, that, I think that's lost him 10, 15 seconds. <laughs> he will get a kind of shame though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you there, Scott finds the replay of this one, so we'll get to relive it in all its glory. So he fired down to he had um, Mokotoli Anchich right behind. So Mokotoli Anchich didn't go in, his teammate through and just snagged those rear brakes. Uh, yeah, we're going to find a piece of wall there on the way into pit lane, probably the best spot. We should be able to uh, get that one back out. No drivers there, a little bit of a repair. That's what it looked like from the onboard. And right there is losing time, time, time. So we won't be happy with that, but uh, it'll live in our memories forever. Uh, James Scott in the lane. So someone else might actually lead a lap here. Which, considering how dominant <laughs> Scott has been, I, I, if I him, I'd want the grand slam personally. Uh, pole position, fastest lap, lead every lap, and uh, win the race, obviously. The, the lap's uh, probably the most important. Congratulations, you, but, you've led a lap. Yeah, he's stolen it off him. Well, to be fair, Scott oh. may have led across the line. So if Ross comes in on this lap, then maybe Scott will set that one. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if anyone keeps record of that. Uh, Tally Anchich also stays out, which is as purple pursuit. Uh, Tally Anchich always likes to extend the uh, extend the snip. However, they haven't been that great on their tyres so far this season. I mean, we're all approximating this a little bit. We haven't got a whole lot of data to our disposal, but uh, disposal, so. Um, but um, yeah, he hasn't been uh, fantastic as the snip goes on. But uh, it's not been too bad so far, 11 seconds off the uh, provisional race leader. Scott comes out in sixth place, five drivers still yet to pit, along with also Greg Sharp and Jamie Dyke in seventh and eighth. Uh, Myers uh, ahead of Haber. Was that the same order? I think Haber was ahead of Myers before the pit stop, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah, definitely. So that's a big change there. And Haber, uh, yeah, eight tenths of a second behind. So that undercut for Brady Myers has, uh, or was it an, an undercut for Brady Myers? It, they actually came in on the same lap, and Haber was a second and a half longer in the pit stop. So maybe Myers just saving a little bit of fuel, and he's been able to uh, get ahead of his rival. That is uh, big for the podium places. Yeah, the other option there is, and we know how tight Altus do like to run their strategies. He may have just shaved that little bit of fuel out to get the position come back through because we did see him have that moment prior to the pit stop there where he lost a fistful of time and allowed Damien Johnson to close right back up on him as we drop back to this little group following him behind Greg Sharp there so not too much of a gap uh, Haber should be able to close that down as this race continues on see a few more guys continuing down the lane with uh, Wally Hansen and Lock uh, Loxton come through Greg Sharp also now diving in to allow this fight to continue on Haber with a huge amount of curve they fire through the final chicane there. Oh, and Greg Sharp's gone around in the pit lane as well. Oh, dang. And to add insult to injury, he's got a drive through penalty. Wow. Uh, wow, wow. Maybe he's, is he driving this? He might be serving the drive through, I don't know. Um, or maybe he wants to do the pit stop, but that is uh, dreadful. I mean, that's, I, that's the law of his life, I, I, I'd hope. Um, but yeah, maybe someone's put some maple syrup down there. Um, and he's gone spinning around. I think he is just going straight to the pits, you know. So maybe yeah, serving his driving now. Through. And now, um, now we'll have to, as we got the triple nine with a penalty, who is, uh, oh, Christian Smart with the penalty. Was he the one who cut the chicane earlier on? No, that was lap 16, so that, that was something different. I don't think we saw that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, Smart with a penalty. Big thanks to, of course, the uh, stewards who uh, go up that time to help out with the uh, with the championship. And uh, are always uh, doing a really good job with these incidents. And thanks for uh, them letting us know uh, about all of them. Yeah, that's a look just there at the replay of that one. So Stockton just making a bit of contact on uh, well, actually getting some contact made on him by Christian Smart. So I uh, hope that 
we believe, is what uh, has ultimately sent Christian back through the lane for his uh, now penalty. Do you think this also now in the lane too? Sorry, Sam. Yeah, so, so, so they interrupt, but I, I, was, I was just going to say, do you think this is a good strategy here from Ross? Because he had a chance at, you know, taking on uh, Haber and, and, and Myers, perhaps Johnston, Dyson. It's around those guys and extending it this long. He's surely going to be losing quite a bit of time or, or maybe he's waiting for a safety car because if there is a safety car, then he's in the boxing. I think it's going to be a bit of a tall ask, even with the safety car. His gap currently over James Scott's just over 20 seconds. We're looking at around a 55 second transit time through the lane uh, with the stop included in that. So he's going to fall quite a ways behind. If you get the safety car, that will definitely help mitigate some of that damage. But at the moment, he's looking at like coming up in and around 10th to 11th position, just based on the, uh, the gaps that we're seeing down the timing board at the moment. So. He's going to have to make hay while the sun shines as uh, he's got that light fuel load, big slide. So those tyres are near the end of their uh, effective range. But uh, he's going to have to really start pushing on if he wants to try and mitigate how far down the, the order he's going to fall when he does come in for this uh, one stop tonight. I think he'll stay ahead of Dyson. I think because you cut like the last chicane in the first couple of corners, he might be us Oh, as we've got McKnight and Bennett. Have come together. That's midway round the track. In fact, we'll probably come across this relatively soon with Ross. Oh, it's going to be a lap down. Oh, it's a bit further along that dot. Um, but there they are, a bit wounded, you can see. Uh, the 080 of Jamie Dyke gets ahead, so McKnight got away from that quicker. And they have both lost quite a bit of time there. Uh, Bennett, uh, yeah, all these guys have pitted already. Good shot, the only driver yet to pit in the uh, 10 to uh, 20th. And that was the uh, incident with McKnight. And uh, yeah, and uh, Cross Bennett losing out a uh, big time from that moment. If the stewards were had to investigate uh, that incident at all. Uh, still, uh, we've got Ross, Taliancic, Sharp yet to come into the pits. Everyone else has done. And this is really extending the stint bay. But I thought maybe Scott might extend it this far to be fair. He had such a cushion, he, he could afford to do that. He's got such good pace anyway. Um, I mean, he could probably run the same set of tyres at the end of the race and, and get away with it. Um, here comes the triple seven on Tony Andrews finally into the pits. I always say it whenever we come to these circuits, this and Zolder are the big ones. You want to come into the pits when you've got a gap in front of you. You won't be able to go full speed into the pits because actually breaking for the corner rather than breaking for the pits, that's going to lose you, particularly around Zolder. It's not quite as bad here, but around Zolder, that's going to lose you two seconds. It's always worth taking into consideration uh, Unfortunately, for Tang actually didn't lose too much time there, but they uh, still have to break for the car just in front of them. Compared to some of these other competitors who have entered the pit lane semi backwards tonight, uh, yes, yeah, he didn't lose a lot there. I've never seen it before around this circuit, and then we see it twice. Remarkable. I, th I think we we started talking about style points, and they all tried to up the game. <laughs> but this is this is Kobe Jones. Uh, he's uh, battling with Corey Shepard and the back of Andrew Dyson missing out that uh, rear wing. Can't be too effective through the corners. Uh, still making relatively good pace that being said that we're in that car and we did see him involved in a couple of incidents earlier on in the race so to uh, still find himself up in the sixth position uh, overall very good run for him. Corey Shepard still trying to claw his way back up timing and scoring tree. It's been a uh, bit of a night of what could have been. We're, I know we still a lot of time left on the race, but uh, he'll be ruling those couple of mistakes as we see the current race there. Jordan Ross now in the lane, and uh, effectively hand back over the lead of this race to James Scott. His pace, to be fair, Ross, was really good on those old tyres. I mean, uh, 36.3 was his last lap. Um, last, last, last full lap um, and that's actually faster than Damien Johnston in fifth place so uh, I, I think he'll be just behind Dice no he'll be just behind Johnston but ahead of Dyson I imagine in P6 and of course we'll have 
uh, pressure tires, you'll need a safety car to bunch up the order and then you'll have pressure tires on everyone else. Uh, we'll see if that, that strategy works. Ross still stationary, 20.28 uh, in the pits. Now, can he get ahead of Andrew Dyson and Kobe Jones? It's going to be pretty close between the lots of them. And he is ahead. That's a relief for him. He's actually quite clear ahead, four seconds clear. So he's now got eight seconds to catch up to Johnston with seven lap pressure tires. Well, that's quite an advantage. One would think that's, that's probably going to be four tenths, five tenths of a, of a lap faster now for uh, for us. So he's got time, 13 laps now to catch up to the rest. If yeah, he can maximize really, them. It'll definitely help him out. He lights it up with a big slide. I did see two just... Uh, Andrew Dyson behind just making a uh, marginal bit of contact with the wall out of turn four there. So um, this guy's still pushing, but uh, Ross going to have to really fight on now, get that tyre pressure back up, start uh, chasing down the guys in front. But he has got some lap traffic that he's going to have to contend with as well, which isn't going to make it easy for him. Yeah, that was also... So it's like, okay, carry on. I was going to say, that was also his problem when he did that uh, reverse strategy at Le Mans last week. So uh, he's, he's still throwing the throwing the dice out there and giving us a, a different perspective of the show. But uh, he's definitely got to avoid that lap traffic if he can. Another man to watch out for is Michael Taliancic, who's uh, came into the pits a couple of laps ago. He's currently in 10th place ahead of Philip Worley. Uh, he's five seconds far top behind Thomas Hintz. Um, and yeah, oh, you, you can check out the, the lifetime free sub. You can click on the link in the description below, provided by SDK Gaming, and that will open up the live timing. You can also open up the track map as well, which is pretty useful and uh, a few other uh, good things uh, on that web page but certainly the lap time will be very helpful last lap time best lap time the lap that the drivers came into the pits which is really useful in a tire race like this so i certainly do recommend it uh, of course sdk gaming also providing all of the lovely graphics you are seeing on the screen and uh have some pretty good uh in race uh graphics as well fuel calculations and and, and uh, all that other good stuff so i uh, certainly do check them out. Um, yeah, actually starting to close up a little bit now. Briggs is, uh, you can see for yourself, catching up to Hansen very quickly. And a Briggs really does need to sort out his qualifying. I guess he got caught up in that incident with Sydney on the first lap, guys. Uh, he managed to make it through there. He obviously on skates. He did get some contact a little bit further on, down into the hairpin there. And, um, it was one of the XG cars we saw pinching the brakes and just catching the back end of Briggs, which sent him around. So. Um, not a great run through. He's managing to work his way back up, just dispense there of Marty Hansen down in through the third chicane. And, uh, should be able to press on further up. Another one of the DPR cars getting into it with uh, Michael Tolliancic closing all over the back of Phil Worley here. This could be a great opportunity for Tolliancic down the inside. He's going to have a huge run here. So Worley actually got past, and now Tony is trying to get this position back. So they've already changed positions on this lap. Uh, but Tony Ancic uh, isn't happy about it. Remember, he has got the pressure tires. I'm surprised that the 2 3 3 is perhaps such a good fight. There goes Tony Ancic. That's very deep. And uh, he's surely going to make contact, oh. and they do. Well, uh, you could maybe argue that Worley was, was a bit diagonal himself going into the corner. Loxton benefits from that moves up into the top 10. But uh, oh, I know that seems pretty, pretty ambitious. Telling he's just doing the right thing and redressing it all, almost immediately. So he knows that wasn't on and he knows he'll have to fight again. Although they've both let Marty Hansen by, so they've got to do that all over again. Yeah, Briggs also sneaking through in that little exchange as well. So a couple of positional losses there for both those cars. But uh, you can see him back out in uh, Telly the uh, Good Sportsman Award there. Just getting off the throttle and allowing everyone to settle themselves through. We'll fight a, another battle in the not too distant future here. Not too far from being just under 10 laps to go in this one. I mean, honestly, if I was telling you, so I, I, you know, maybe, maybe I'm just a despicable person, but I, I would have let that one go. I, I, I would have contested that one. I'm not sure if that was his fault, but there you go. There you go. Um, He's too nice a guy. He's too nice a guy. Uh, he shouldn't be in a race car if, he, if he's that nice. He's got to be, uh, got to be horrible. 
Uh, Jamie Stable, this meanwhile. Is while you're in the comp box. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, honestly, I, I love it. Um, yeah, good side of Jairus. Uh, Stable and Bennett, 19th and 20th. Stable actually getting ahead of Jet Bennett there. He uh, was on the attack, but very quickly has changed round. Dylan Rudd is just ahead of these guys. In fact, all three of them on that last lap. 37 2 2, 37 2 1, 37 2 2. That's so consistent. Uh, they were <laughs> incredibly evenly matched on their last So that's, that's mind boggling, actually. Um, so, yeah, really not much of a difference between the lot of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, Rudd's still leading at the moment out of this trio. Just to go running a bit wide was uh, was Bennett behind. That's going to play him off line for the second part of the corner. Got me so um, kind of neat around this circuit. You, you compromise a bit of speed in one corner. So many chicanes around this place. So you compromise speed in the first part to then get speed through the second part. It's a very fiddly circuit, a really tricky circuit. Uh, but at the same time, can be a lot of fun to uh, really uh, get the most out of the car. You've got to get closer and closer to the barriers. And particularly it's a hot lap, and this is uh, one of my favourites in, uh, in all of our racing, particularly when you've got a kind of a, a prototype, especially, can really carry a lot of speed through the corners. Uh, I think Stables is going to be past Rudd any moment now. He seems to have a lot more pace, and into the head, it might be his uh, best opportunity yet. Yeah, looked a little bit out of shape just as he got that car up and over the curb, so might not be in for a run here, but definitely going to have a good opportunity to close this down in the 13. Actually gets a slightly better run through the mid corner over Dylan Rudd, so there should be a good opportunity here for him down in the 13 and 14. You can see also McKnight was ducking out of frame as well. To just to touch on your point, Sam, about how the guys are driving this car. We're noticing a lot of them keeping these cars very square off the corners to try and minimise that wheel spin. And we've already seen quite a few times tonight where the guys trying to still exit with a little bit of mop on, manage to really excite those rear tyres, get it up against the wall. And while it looks showy, it's definitely not the, uh, the quickest way around, and this car is still a big lock up down into turn one. Didn't seem to hamper his speed through the corner though, so it looks like he got away with that one pretty nice and neatly. This is James Scott heading our field, six seconds over his teammate Brady Myers. Some cars between them, you'll see Brady at the back of this shot. No, you won't. That's the gap. It's been able to maintain it since the pit stops. Oh, Hanson, Hanson, Hanson. Dear, dear me, Hanson was having such a good race as well. Uh, I think he was up 15 places. He got ahead, of course, of uh, of Worley and Taliancic when they collided earlier on. And he is now back on his way. In fact, he just said it's fast up as well. But he's uh, had a problem out there. And uh, it's down to 16th place now. Leads out to Borg and, and Jones as well. It's still up nine places from his start, but that would have been Hansen, one of Hanson's best results of the season. Not anymore, though. But yes, uh, since the pit stops, Myers has been able to maintain that gap, actually, to Scott. But, of course, the race leader probably leaving quite a bit to, uh, to spare. In fact, Mount Myers on that last step, six tenths of a second faster. Um, Shame that Myers kind of, uh, I think we could say, messed up his qualifying. I mean, seventh place in qualifying is usually a good qualifier as well. Is Myers has got front race starts so far this season. Um, but he's recovered really neatly since then, got through the lap, first lap shenanigans and then just picked them off one by one ever since. I think it's been one of his best race performances all season. Yeah, no arguing that. When you when you qualify poorly for Brady down at P7, it's a, it's a good run to get back to where he normally races, which is uh, right behind his teammates. So uh, he's also increased that lead over Harley Haber there. So. Um, driver who we thought we'd probably see a bit more of and um, he's holding the fort tonight in P3. Here comes Jones on Dyson, 6th seven, six and 7th, Shepard just behind, he starts it on the front row of the grid in 8th. Ah, no chance into the chicane. You get a good run off this, it's a pretty good exit for the Zuba car, it's quarter of a second. Oh, in fact, a slowdown for the 41. Oh, well, that's no way to give up the position 
and uh, Andrew Dyson there with a mistake, taking too much entry curve. And look how slow he is. Is that a slowdown, guys? Or is, has he actually got a bigger problem there? Because he's just lost four seconds by doing that. I don't think the slowdown's that significant. It hurts. Yeah, they, they will hurt you quite a fair bit around here. And uh, it looks like he actually dropped as a result of that three spots. So uh, Thomason's might have just managed to get past, if not, Dyson's got back ahead of him. But yeah, very um, awkward spot there. I saw all three. Didn't look like they were taking too much of an advantage from either of those cars as they worked their way through. But yeah, unfortunate there. Michael Taliantius, though, still working on the back of Phil Wally. Just struggling a little bit at this moment. It's almost sort of stalled in that 13th position. There's not much between either of these guys just looking at the lap times. I think Tali Anchez just got a slowdown as well. You can see he was all four wheels uh, off the track going through the second part of the chicane and then just serving that slowdown base slowly. The uh, gap is extending up to 1.7 now, but I think he's served it now. This is an that annoying shows, aspect, but it, it's, it's kind of necessary. Just shows how hard everyone's pushing. You might think lap 29 of 34, okay, that's the end of the race, slow it down, just bring it home. No, they're still pushing, they're still fighting, they're still looking for every tense out there on the circuit. And uh, and you see it when they come unstuck. So that foot comes off the throttle and they have to serve that time penalty. Not sure what happened to Jacob Knight earlier on. Because he was he was really doing well. Oh, Dyson, was that was he lifting coasting there, Dyson? Though his his engine went silent. Um, but yeah, I don't know what happened to Jake. No, I think he was running in the top 15 earlier on, but he's down to 26th now. Actually, uh, only one place up from his start. So uh, had a fine pit stop. Did uh, did Jacob Knight? Or uh, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of someone else. But uh, yeah, I, I thought he was doing all right. But uh, yeah, they're down a few places at the moment. And one driver who's kind of gone very much under the radar tonight. It's been a really quiet run for him. Thomas Hins, who keeping an eye on at the moment, already up 13 spots from where he started. So uh, another one of those drivers that was a, a big beneficiary of that earlier lap one contact, and, uh, just continuing to plot along. So this would be a good haul of points. He was able to maintain this spot towards the end, but he has got uh, Andrew Dyson starting to close in on him. And uh, Corey Shepard well up the road. There is a oh, uh, car stationary. Manny Hanson. Oh. The other, the other type anchor. Arctil. Yep. There we go. Um, he's done a, a, a low quality qubit so there, hasn't he? I don't know how you go off at that corner. Is it, is it even a corner? I don't know. We'll see again how he did it. Yeah, actually just caught the grass and managed to find the wall. So he, he kind of got the best of the two bits and just didn't get the, uh, the big rollover and fire off the end into the gravel trap. But uh, <laughs> I must say, he did a good job though just to pull that car out of the way and I let everyone through and join back in where he had a good opportunity to do so. So uh, hats off into that one. Corey Shepard though, still trying to get his way back into position here. Still down in that seventh spot. Seems to be falling off the back though of Kobe Jones, so I don't know whether the tyres are now a bit shot on that car or what, but uh, just struggling a little bit with uh, bringing it home at the end. Corey Shepard would be ruining tonight's performance, could have been so much more, but uh, if not for cut tracks and slowdowns, he could have had a top four, top three running even had he have stayed very qualified on P2. Uh, but it's good to know the pace is there in the Premier Racing Team car and he will be fighting fit next week, no doubt. Tom Fear is trying to gain a, uh, a couple more places in 24th at the moment. Just looking at the where the closest bats are there, Kim and Peacock and uh, Freya. In second, 23rd and 24th at the moment, further down. Uh, yeah, could be a move pretty soon amongst all of those drivers. Also, Sharp, Gaffer, and Barnes uh, passing with one another. Allow uh, just over a lap off the uh, off the race lead. 
across the short circuit, big grid. We have seen traffic very prominent so far in this event. There is James Scott making his way through the order. In fact, actually, these guys are still on the lead lap, and I think they, well, it depends if you're at the front of this. If you're on the front of this train, you want to stay on the lead lap. So you got, uh, or, or sorry, if you're at the back of this train, you want to be on, on the lead lap, so you get an extra lap to overtake those drivers ahead. This could be trou troublesome for, for, for Scott here, because these guys are battling pretty hard at the moment. Um, Whiting, the most likely to make a move, but Barnes just with a small uh, slipstream from Gaffer ahead. And no chance. Penwright might be uh, might be doing a smart thing here, just back up the others so that they go a lap down, and then uh, you've got one less lap to defend. Only, uh, only three to go for the leader now. I think the explanation, explanation point on the um, sentence you just said there, Sam, was they're still on the lead lap for now. As we see, James Scott flashing Michael Whiting to move that fishy car into the Montreal River. And uh, he'll uh, take that position and uh, keep mowing down the field. Oh, Ross. Why has Jordan Ross come into the pits? He, that is very strange. Has he got a, a penalty or what? Because he put in... A, uh, he didn't put in much fuel, did he? Pain enough, though. Does he have to come to a stop or is it just a drive through? It seems like he is going to turn into the, the pit yeah. stall. So that is uh, really strange because he pits very late. He took 20 seconds worth of fuel. That's more than Dyson. That's similar to Myers. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised that he's had to do that. Yeah, that is not good for Ross. That is massively off sequence from what he should have been doing and that's fallen well down the field. 13 as he circulates again. Oh yeah, he's going to be around these guys, isn't he? Where is he? Oh, he's ahead. Fortunately, oh, Voss has gone off the circuit. He's done oh, it truly and now. In the, in the in the grass, in the fence. Which one did he hit first? And just lost the back end around there. We're going to have a pretty decent highlights reel come to the end of this one between some of the incidents we've seen tonight, <laughs> however. A bleep reel. I think some Absolutely. of these are maybe are racing not top 10. Yeah, it's very uncommon that we see as many issues as we have, especially transiting the pit lane. I mean, it's, it's hugely uncommon that we see a couple of cars rotate around, especially on the on the entry, let alone on the exit after coming for a fresh set of boots. So, uh, yeah, no doubt uh, race organisers find something pretty entertaining <laughs> uh, hopefully to put up at the end of the week but um, continue on watching Tom Freer here um, he's got Cameron Beacock uh, actually just a little further up so uh, these guys a little further down the order 23rd 24th and you've got Kidman and Dyke just ahead of these two uh, just like bump Tom Freer out of his uh, usual position. He's moved it up to P15 on the road. P15? Uh, 24. 24. Uh, maybe it's now 23. Oh, that's very close. Massive wild card. Freer and uh, is ahead of Beacock now. Didn't take too much curb, did he? No, he seems to be all right. I think that will be as far as he gets up. He is the highest gainer. 30 places, Freer. Not quite sure why he's over the back. That might be... Uh, might be a penalty. It's been a frustrating season for Freer, and it's been a frustrating season for C because they were so strong last season, probably the third strongest team behind, um, of course, Logitech and uh, and also uh, United. But, of course, Pursuit have a, a few more drivers than, than certainly Logitech do. So we kind of have a, a lot of drivers here, a lot of bodies in that top 10. And the season hasn't quite worked out because Freer had that brilliant battle with, uh, with Scott last season at Watkins Glen. I mean, he uh, really should have won that race, had the pace over Scott, but just could not find a way past him for the final 10 laps or so with a couple of safety car periods thrown in there as well. And, and the season. Robo this season. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah he, was, he was doing pretty well back, back then, didn't he? Um, I, I think he got a decent result out of that as the 99. Oh. Well, I uh, know, is that a good result? That, and there's contact again, and it, oh, that's almost into the wall for Ross, Ross, Ross uh, I think he was just benefiting from that. Yeah, he's got his way through. It's unfortunate, as you say, not to, to find his way through the wall. 
We are also working our way through the final portion of the lap. Uh, James Scott just heading up to the hairpin for the final time as well. And um, not too far from seeing the conclusion of this race. A couple of guys here potentially could see their night end a little bit earlier. Greg Sharp just ahead there, uh, already just about one lap down. Also, Ken Ladder involved in it. These guys still fighting for a, uh, a potential just inside the top 30 spot. You're going to have to be cautious here with the race leaders coming through. Yeah, it's not much motivation for Scott to, uh, to overtake it. Oh, there goes the sun for sun. Oh, what a move that's going to be. Oh, contact between oh. the two. Scott, Scott, be very careful there just to avoid any of the mess. They won't complete an extra lap. And there won't be any more laps for James Scott because in this season nine, he makes it nine out of nine. It's another race win for James Scott. Myers makes it another Logitech G Altus Esports 1-2. There were the class of the field tonight. Harley Haber on his return, a brilliant podium. Congratulations to him. Uh, Shepard closing in on Jones just further back, but it's going to be Jones who goes up 12 places from his start to get one of his best results of the season. Kobe Jones finishes in fifth place. Johnston was fourth and Shepard in sixth. Other battles going on. Stovall still having to defend against Rudd. Wide for the uh, driver just behind as well. Of, uh, I think that's a back marker actually. In fact, it's Ross leading this. Uh, actually getting past Stovall, I believe, early on in this lap. Or maybe that was the incident we saw at the hairpin on the previous lap. Ross will hold on to that one. I think we've got to go further down, guys, though, to Cameron Beacock and Stephen Varga. Oh, also we've got Dyke, Kim and Bennett as well. But here's Vic Peacock, who's leading a very powerful train hit of about five cars. Varga closing two tenths of a second. It's not worth the risk because he's got three cars right behind and he doesn't want to lose those three places. Don't want to pick up a slowdown as well. Before the line, oh, hard into the wall. And that's a bit of a Magnuson now that they're done. It's the 24 of, um, of uh, Jet, or, or, uh, Jacob Knight, sorry. He's gone hard into the wall. Right at the finish, he will get to the line, but he leads out to Mascord, beats Smart, but uh, Jacob Knight with a huge impact to finish off the 150 kilometers just behind them. Latter gets Smart. I think Smart's went out of fuel. And after a, uh, after a drive through penalty early on for the triple nine, still finishes on the lead lap, which is uh, quite impressive considering the drive through and runs out of fuel as well on the final sprint to the finish. So, um, that is, is that everyone across the line? That was pretty quick if everyone did, and that is. So we can go through your final results then straight away for this round nine of the championship. Scott wins, six seconds clear of Brady Mars. Harley Haber in third place. Damian Johnston, a half a minute back, but still a good fourth place to synergy sim racing. Kobe Jones finishes in fifth. There's Corey Shepard, uh, Thomas Hins, Andrew Dyson, Brett Loxton, Adam Briggs rounding out the top 10, beating his teammate Philip Worley, uh, who of course had a collision with uh, McKnight, uh, sorry, with, uh, with Tali Entridge. Uh, Worley surprisingly pulling away from Tali Entridge. He didn't have a whole lot of pace on those pressure tyres at the end. Brian Bork is, uh, uh, in, in the Premier Racing team was in 13th. Then it was Craig Jones in 14th, Jamie McKnight, Marty Hansen, uh, Jordan Ross, Jamie Stovalls, Dylan Rudd, Jamie Dyke, uh, David Kimmons, Tom Freer up 31 places, the highest gainer of anyone, of course. Cameron Beacock uh, won out that uh, very close battle at the end in 23rd. Then it was uh, Stephen Varga, uh, Jordy Sinney, Rob Bowden, uh, Jet Bennett, Matty Mascord, Jacob Knight, Ken Latter, Christian Smart, Tony Gaffer, Michael Whiting, Neil Pearson, uh, Chris Barnes, Simon Chadwick, Jaden Borg, Greg Sharp, Tyson McAvoy. And Stephen Martin rounding out the top 40. Behind that, it was Sean Chappell, uh, Cameron Jones, Matt Davis, Dean v uh, Reddit, uh, Damon Stockton, Alex Schuler, Mark Diddle, uh, Scott McCune, and then the first of the retirees, and all these were retirees, uh, Harry Dodds, Michael Dumbrell, Carl Stokes, Paul Warwick, Michael Barron, and shockingly, Nick also, I don't think, did a lap. Um, unless that was when I was aware. I don't think he did a lap, though. Which is surprising, like I said, I'm, I'm surprised that we don't have a safety car right here. It, well, it looks like the perfect opportunity. Uh, now, I'm sure this guy is absolutely bored of me talking to him now because it's the ninth, ninth time this season that he's going to have to have to chat to me. Uh, James Scott joins us in the commentary box. Uh, James, it's 
9 out of 9. And, um, well, after a very tricky and stressful Le Mans race, that seems a little bit early, uh, a bit bit, uh, bit easier. You pulled the, you got pole position by three tenths, then you pulled a gap, and from then on, it was just uh, seemingly quite, uh, quite an easy drive for you. Well, that was definitely the plan. Um, I definitely wanted it to be a bit easier than how Le Mans ended up. I um, was able to put the right amount of fuel in this time, which is always good. Um, but yeah, the car was car was pretty good. Um, and yeah, the, just was trying to navigate the uh, lap traffic in that second stint there and it was just taking it nice and easy. Talk us through that uh, qualifying lap you actually had at the end of the session because whilst everyone else wasn't really improving, you managed to all of a sudden improve by about a tenth and a half and really put a, really put a gap between yourself and the rest. W was there a little bit kind of more uh, available then on that on that final lap? How, how, how did you improve whilst the others were struggling? Um, no, I wouldn't say there was anything in the track. I think just on my previous best lap, I didn't get the best run through that turn three, four uh, section. Um, the rest of the lap was pretty even, but I just was able to tidy up that turn three, four section and um, find some time. How close were you getting to the walls out there? Do you change your driving style when you got a lead like you did, or do you just carry on driving the way that you were in practice? What, what's your mindset when it comes to that? Um, obviously, in qualifying, you want to be um, maximum attack, so right up against the walls. But yeah, when you do have a gap um, in the race, you're able to give yourself just that little bit extra room. Um, but around here, I feel like uh, when you get into a rhythm around here, it's the walls sort of don't really aren't, in, aren't really in your mind. Um, so you're able to still push the limits, but uh, and still do very good lap times. Just um, yeah, not hitting the walls. Next up, we head to Phillip Island, which is a circuit. I did we visit there last season? I, I can't quite remember. It's another 150. How are you feeling about that? Uh, if I remember correctly, we did go there last season. Um, it's. I'm personally probably going to get a bit of flack for this, but I'm not the biggest fan of Phillip Island. Um, but I'm sure it'll produce some good racing, um, which is obviously what we want. And. Um, Hopefully we can have a good setup there and see what we can do. Did you win there last season? Uh, yes, I did. I think I won by about six seconds over Andrew Gilliam, I believe it was. Okay, I, I, I'm, super, I, I'm usually pretty good at remembering races, you see, but I, I honestly can't remember that. Um, but uh, I'm sure if you hadn't won, then uh, I would have remembered it because it, it would have been uh, quite exceptional because it's now nine out of nine for ye. Uh, James, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we say goodbye? Um, obviously, all the guys at Alta Sea Sports. Um, Brady, obviously, put in a great drive tonight and um, was able to definitely um, help out during the race there. Um, and all our great sponsors um, Logitech G, Astro Gaming, Cube Controls, Own 3D, and Race Tech Seats. And a quick shout out to Jordan Caruso. Uh, he didn't race tonight, but was able to help out with the setup bit during the week um, and obviously you guys for putting on a broadcast and the AOSC admin awesome thank you very much uh, James and we will see you back next week thanks guys James Scott there for Logitech G Altus Esports winning out uh, for, uh, for for the ninth time this season uh, Daniel you are now standing by with the other Logitech G Altus Esports driver of uh, BD Myers yeah, thanks, Sam. Brody, congratulations, mate. Another strong result for not only yourself, but also Logitech taking the 1-2 tonight. Um, maybe not probably the best qualifying in your books, starting 7th tonight, but you managed to claw your way through the field and find yourself in some solid battles all the way through. Uh, talk us through a bit from your end. How did you find it out there? Yeah, it was um, definitely not my best qualifying. <laughs> um, just one lap pace, like I've, I haven't done many laps this week, so one lap pace has been eluding me a bit. But um, as as a race car, our car was very good, so um, it was just very easy to manage tires and just ride curbs and everything. So, all you know, mad props to James because he's done a massive bit of work this week on setup. Yeah, definitely. And uh, look, early on, we saw you 
as you started working your way through the field, you found yourself in a pretty decent fight with Damian Johnston, managed to get the run through from there, caught right up on the back of Harley Haber. Um, looking at the, the way the pit stops unfolded, we weren't too sure whether you might have underfilled the car or not because it looked a little bit quicker on the, the total stop comparative to the other guys, but you came out with quite an advantage. Did you find you'd, you'd had to, to trim the fuel much to, to maintain that gap? And from there, how did it unfold to finish it out? Um, didn't have to save too much. Um, we sort of did a bit of saving early behind Damien and Harley when we were just um, yeah sitting behind. And I think um, that sort of paid dividends in the pit stop as it showed. So um, from then we could just sort of measure ourselves in like, how much fuel we used and how much we had to, well, how much I had to um, uh, cut back if I needed to. So um, it was, it worked out in the end. Absolutely. Next week we're off to Phillip Island. Uh, we just heard from James. Maybe not a track that he enjoys particularly well, which is a little bit weird coming from an Aussie. But uh, for yourself, how do you find? Uh, you, or think your chances are going to be going off to Phillip Island next week? I can understand James's frustrations uh, with Phillip Island. Um, obviously, with the with the under the series happening with the draft and everything, but um, uh, I've done a stupid amount of laps around Phillip Island in the last 14 days, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty prepped. But um. You know, anything's possible. There's a lot of quick guys at Phillip Island, especially you know, a few few experts. So um, we'll see how we go. Fantastic. Well, again, look, congratulations on a, a fantastic result tonight and a solid drive back through the field to come home in second place tonight. Before we let you go and enjoy the victory, or the second place and, and the one-two for the team with James, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout-out and a thanks to? Yeah, obviously, just thanks to um, James. He did a massive amount of work on setup and trying to get the car balanced and look after its tyres really well and he managed to do that you know quite well uh, this week. Uh, massive shout out to our lo- uh, partners and sponsors Logitech G, Astro Gaming, uh, Q Controls, iLiveries, Motorsport Australia, Own TV, Race Tech Seats and to you guys for the broadcast. Thank you. All right, mate, again, congratulations on a solid result and uh, look forward to hopefully catching up with you guys again next week at uh, Phillip Island. Sounds good. Thanks guys. Grady Myers there for Lost Tech G Altus Esports, your second place driver. And we've now got your third place driver back in the commentary box for the first time in a while in this series, Harley Haber, and he's standing by with Nori. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Harley, welcome back to the podium section of the commentary box. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen you. I think the last time we saw you it was at Silverstone. Uh, it's good to come back, and it's good to come back with a podium. Yeah, thanks, Nori. Thanks, guys. It's uh, it's good to be back. Obviously, as you said, and I think today was like around nine, and we hadn't um, yeah, hadn't, hadn't raced AOC for a while, but thought we'd jump back into the supercar and do a couple of laps after the E Series announcement, which is pretty much what we're here for, mate. We're just uh, here to have a bit of fun, bang some doors, and get back into the rhythm of racing supercars again before uh, that all kicks off at the end of the month. So um, AOC is kind of perfect for that with us, and we jumped in, done a couple of laps last night, and got in today, and and uh, had a good race. Definitely on fine form, mate. Jump back in and, and I mean, your qualifying was solid with P5, but then you really raced through the pack uh, to get yourself up to P3. You were in P2 for a while there. Uh, what sort of happened in the pit stop? Was that just an overfill or how did that work out? Um, no, we, we cut the fuel pretty fine. We, we crossed the line with half a litre, so we pretty much done everything that we could. But um, Brady just had a, a one and a half second better pit stop than we did. So he was would have been saving in the in the stint before us, which is which is good for him, mate. And um, obviously the Altus cars are pretty quick. They both got a one, two. So uh, hats off to their pace. We kind of came into this just hoping to get a top five, mate, and um, come away with a podium, which is a which is, uh, good night. It's not too shabby. Um, uh, as we heard from Brady, a, a lot of people doing the E-Series draft uh, doing Phillip Island, and so they've got a lot of practice. Are you looking forward to the next round if you're gracing us with your presence? Um, yeah, mate. Uh, I honestly haven't looked at uh, where the next round is, but, um, mate, uh, I think, yeah, we'll be rocking up and doing a bit more AOSC uh, on the lead-up and just staying in supercars just to just get a bit more laps under my belt and, and get back into racing again because I know we used to do AOSC uh, quite often we used to do that kind of week in, week out, and that was quite good. But um, that 
kind of dropped off a little bit as I just took a bit of a break from everything, but now it's all starting to ramp up again. We'll uh, we'll use this as a bit of a testing ground. It's awesome to see you back, mate. Uh, while well, we've got you here, is there anyone you want to thank? Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, obviously, all of our partners at United Sim Sports and Valvoline being our major one with uh, West End Mazda, Too Easy Finance, and Parramatta Isuzu Ute all uh, all on the car as well. So thanks to those guys for for their continued support. Look forward to um, coming back next week and having another run with the boys. Well, congratulations on P3 tonight. Congratulations on your MSR gig in the E Series, and uh, I guess we'll see when we see you next at the podium. Thank you, everybody. Take it easy. Ali Haber there for United Sim Sports with that P3 finish. Um, Daniel, next time out, of course, we head to Phillip Islands. Uh, it is a favourite circuit among you Aussies. Us Europeans, we don't visit it that much, but you Aussies seem to visit it um, kind of every other season because we visited there last season as well. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. I, I, I guess everyone's got so much experience around that place, similar to a lot of experience around, around this circuit as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, look, it's it's a bit of a an Australian favourite. We've only got three Aussie circuits on the calendar at the moment, but um, definitely one where the drivers put a huge amount of time in. Um, in the same way that they do with Bathurst, there's a lot of guys that are very intimate with the circuit and know how to extract the most out of these cars. I think too, following on from um, what Nori was saying, we've had quite a lot of guys recently competing um, for the E-Series and, and hats off to the guys that did manage to get their way through to that. But uh, as a result of that, they've got a lot of time under their belt. They've really dialed in their setups. So heading there next week, really going to present some interesting racing. Obviously, we're going to go away from the tight confines that we've seen here tonight at um, Montreal. Much faster, open flowing GP style layout, uh, which is really going to suit these cars. Going to make passing that little bit more tricky. Um, but a couple of really good opportunities for the guys down in towards Honda and then over the top into Lukey Heights there. Yeah, such a fantastic layout is that, uh, is that track. We look forward to visit there uh, next week. Of course, there'll be another 150 kilometer race and it will be at the same time as, uh, as, as this round of the championship. Of course, I certainly do recommend tuning in for that one. Before you leave, big shout out to all the sponsors once again, Acute Sir. You make heights, rig, rigging, and uh, safety equipment uh, for sale and hire. So if you're doing DIY, it's really useful. If you've got a business and you need any of that equipment, go to Akita. They've got loads of stuff there. Uh, drink shifters, uh, making uh, premium shifters, and also ARB and brick bias adjusters as well. Some fantastic equipment that to uh, improve your rig. Uh, uh, race, car, uh, race Circuit Arts Australia. You make high quality CNC uh, base circuits, uh, which you can hang on your wall. I've seen some fantastic layouts of you know people with you know five or six of them on a wall, and they absolutely look uh, fantastic. Lots of Aussie circuits that you can get a, uh, a design for, along with plenty of circuits around the world as well. Uh, Sixth Gear Imagery, you do sim racing digital imagery, and they will be doing the action shots, which you can find on the AOSC uh, Facebook page. After the race, Wolf Graphics, who make uh, Aussie made stickers, and also West End Master, Too Easy Finance, and Parramatta Isuzu Ute as well, which are all Sydney car dealers. So if you're looking to buy a car in the Sydney area, certainly do go to any of those three and uh, yeah, have a chat with uh, Jim McKnight, who of course races in this series. Um, so we will see you back then for the next round of the championship at Phillip Island for next week. No week breaks for this part of the season. Uh, they're coming rapid and fast. And that's how uh, we like it on the iRacing Esports Network. If you uh, have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on the uh, on the video and also subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network. Subscribe to Apex Racing TV as well. We've got plenty more action, whether you're based in America, there's loads of stuff for that if you're in Europe. And also, if you're in Australia, of course, we've got the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Championship coming up Sunday evening for you Aussies, um, Sunday midday for the Euro Europeans. And uh, yeah, loads of other stuff as well. ARL TC, ARL GT as well, uh, and a bunch of other, other stuff. So subscribe to the Esports Network, subscribe to Apex Racing TV, and turn on notifications as well, so you can see whenever we are going live. Also, please do check out uh, uh, Apex Facing TV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. But for now, from me, from Daniel, from Noe, and from Scott, uh, we are going to say goodbye. It's nine from nine in season nine. 
poor James Scott. Can anyone stop him? At Philip Island. We'll see you then next week.